What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a very affordable laptop. Now I actually picked this up about a month and a half ago for $199 from my local Best Buy. These go on sale all the time. Right now on Amazon they're $228, but if you wait a couple days or maybe a week, it will come down in price. Now this is the Lenovo IdeaPad S145. There's several different models, but I have one of the lower ends here, hence the price, $199. And for a $200 entry level laptop, it's actually really, really nice. Whether you need an extra laptop or you don't already own one, I think this is a great option and this is something you should look at. So as specs go, this is very entry level, but I expected it for a $200 price tag. This is the Lenovo IdeaPad S145. It's powered by an Intel Pentium Gold 5405U dual core processor with four threads at 2.3 gigahertz. The GPU is the built-in Intel 610 UHD, 4 gigabytes of DDR4 at 2133 megahertz, and unfortunately this only has a single slot inside of it. It can be upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but if they would have added an extra slot, we could have got much better performance out of this built-in GPU. Unfortunately, this is just what we get for the price. In my opinion, the only downside to this laptop is the included hard drive. It's a 500 gigabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive, and it does slow things down a bit. So what I did was remove the old mechanical drive and replaced it with a cheaper 240 gigabyte SSD. I upgraded the speed and downgraded the storage, and that's totally fine with me. I only spent $25 on the SSD, so in total, I'm sitting at $225 on this laptop, and with the added speed from the SSD, it does make it a whole different machine. It's got a 15.6 inch 1366 by 768 screen. It's four pounds and it measures 0.78 inches thin with a two cell 30 watt hour battery, good up to about six hours of battery life with the screen at around 30%. On the right hand side of the unit, we have a 3.5 millimeter microphone slash headphone jack, plus a full size SD card reader. Over on the left hand side, we have our charger port, status LED, full size HDMI, two USB 3.0 ports, and one USB 2.0 port. It does have dual stereo speakers, 802.11 AB, GN, and AC, dual band Wi Fi, and Bluetooth 4.2 built in. So in this video, I really want to show you how this little thing performs. So we're going to be testing some video playback, some web browsing, some image editing. We'll get into some PC gaming and even some emulation. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. First things first, this laptop does ship with Windows 10 in S mode, and this will only allow us to install Microsoft apps, but we can go to the Microsoft Store and upgrade to Windows 10 Home for free. So now I'm running Windows 10 Home 64-bit. As you can see, we have the Intel 5405U at 2.3 gigahertz, dual core, four threads, four gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and the built-in Intel UHD 610 GPU. First thing I did was run a few benchmarks. So here's Geekbench 4, single core 2575, multi core 5054. I was actually expecting to get a little less in the multi core, being this is a low end dual core CPU, but 5000 is pretty decent for the price I paid for this thing. Next up, quick JavaScript browser benchmark, and I'm using the Edge browser 14623, and this is something you can run on any of your PCs. It runs right in the browser, so you can see how it stacks up against a machine like this. Remember, Using a different browser will net different results. I also ran a few 3D Mark benchmarks. iStorm Extreme, total score 20,833. Graphic score 21,744. Physics 18,171. CloudGate 1.1, total score 3,955. Now if we go down here, you can see that it's only better than 15% of all other results on their website. But like I mentioned, and the price reflects, this is definitely not a gaming laptop. On the list is some gaming. So first up, we have Left 4 Dead 2. Now I completely understand that this is an older game. It's something I still enjoy playing on Steam. But this is a low-end laptop, so I wanted to test some games I knew would run pretty well. And as you can see here, at 720p, we're getting a decent frame rate. Here's CSGO, low settings, 720p, getting an average of around 34 FPS. It's definitely not ideal, but if you're playing with friends, you could get by with something like this. Now, 
Minecraft is another one that's going to perform really well on this laptop, whether you're using the Java version or the Windows Store version. Another one that my kids tested a few weeks ago was Roblox, and they were able to play it. They used it for a few days. They had their little editor going and everything like that. They never had any complaints, so this will do Minecraft and Roblox. Here's another Steam game. This is Bully. Unfortunately, in the last three games that I was doing some recording with, I lost audio through my game capture, so I didn't capture the audio and I really didn't want to go back through it. But audio is working in these games. This is Bully Scholarship Edition. Next up, we have the original version of Skyrim. Getting an average of around 42 to 40 FPS, 720p, low settings. It's not bad for such a low-end chip. And finally, Fortnite, 720p, low settings, 60% resolution scale, getting an average of around 30 FPS. It's definitely not ideal because you really can't see into the distance. In my opinion, it's not competitively playable on this unit, but if you want to have fun in creative mode and things like that, you could definitely get by. Moving over to my favorite part of these videos, emulation. This is the PSP emulator, PPSSPP, running Ridge Racer, 3x resolution, 60 FPS. Really good PSP emulation in my opinion. Now I'm using the Vulcan backend for this game, but when we move over to God of War Chains of Olympus, I did have to switch to DirectX 11 because there's some glitches with Vulcan. But we're getting 60 FPS, 3x resolution, even with God of War Chains of Olympus. So you really shouldn't have any trouble with PSP emulation on a setup like this. But what about the Dolphin emulator with GameCube games? Well, to my surprise, it actually works really well. This is Auto Modalista, one of the harder games to emulate, and is handling it fine. I also tested Rogue Squadron 2, and we're getting an average of about 40 FPS on any of the back ends at the lowest resolution, so it's not going to be able to handle that game. But most of the GameCube library should be fully playable on a system like this. And real quick, just because I'm here, ReDream, the Dreamcast emulator, is going to perform excellent on this machine. So overall, I've actually been enjoying this little laptop. It's able to play older games really well, a lot of my favorite emulators. Web browsing is fast, video streaming, and even some light image editing using free software like GIMP is possible on a machine like this. It's great for basic everyday tasks, and if you're in the market for a new laptop, not a used laptop, I could recommend this. I personally don't like purchasing used laptops on eBay because when the manufacturer or the seller on eBay or Amazon says refurbish, the screen and the keyboard's probably been wiped down, the hard drive's either been wiped or replaced, and you really never know where that laptop has been and how much use it's gone through. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave links in the description on where you can pick one of these up. Definitely keep an eye out for sales because they happen all the time. Like I mentioned, I got this for $199, and I think it's well worth the $200 price tag. Another thing you could actually do with this is just install Linux on it. And I was actually thinking about doing that in the future. I'd put Manjaro or even Ubuntu on here, and it would run pretty well with a chipset like this. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.